Hi guys, Mr. Pulley here for World Cultures this time, and looking at chapters one and two, our introduction to world cultures, sort of setting an overview, setting the stage, so to speak, for uh, what we're we'll going to be studying this year, looking at everything in, in these two chapters from the earliest humans to modern technology and things. So let's jump in and get started. Oh, but before we do, get your study guide out. I'll wait. Got it? Okay. Get your study guide out because the reason why you want to have it out, we're going to go through a lot of things on the study guide. So if you've got that out, fill them out as I go along. If I go too fast, hey, pause me. You've got the power. Okay? So here we go. Moving on ahead down here at the bottom. Okay? One of the things we look at is the idea of the global environment, where we live. Okay? Part of the here on Earth. And they talk about some things in terms of the Earth and the fact that we use maps and all maps have a problem. And that problem is something called distortion. Okay? Distortion comes from the fact that as we uh, try to make it flat and into a squared shape or a, a rectangular shape as opposed to a round circular shape, uh, we distort the images the further we get away from the poles. Okay? And I'll explain that a little bit more in just a moment when we come down here to this other depiction of the Earth. Okay, this is showing a globe here. And we use on here these lines of latitude and longitude, which are used to describe location. Okay, now latitude, these are the lines that run east and west, like the equator, the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn. These things measure how far north and south we are. They're like hash marks on the football field, for example. Okay, and then we also have lines of longitude okay, that run north and south. Okay, and these are used to measure things east and west. Okay, now um, using these things to, to measure things, we can find our exact location versus a relative location. Exact saying exactly the spot versus relative. It's next to the White House. If you're describing how to get to your house, kind of thing, not the one in Washington D.C., but you've got a brick house next to the White House. Anyway, um, looking at lines of. Uh, Latitude, which move east and west, as we said, these are also called parallels because they don't touch each other. They run parallel, so they don't ever touch. Lines of longitude are also called meridians, and you'll notice they're farthest apart from each other at the equator, and the further you go towards the pole, or the further you go towards the, uh, either one of the poles, north or south poles, they get closer and closer together. And it's then making those lines straight on a flat map that leads to that distortion. Okay. They're talking about hills and plains and parts of our environment. Well, hills and mountains have something that's referred to as, as high elevation. Okay, And so we can see here this big change in elevation, that's high elevation. Whereas plains over here have low elevation, well, except for those mountains in the background which have high elevation. Okay. Changes in human history, they talk about one of these being the uh, advent of agriculture, which is growing our own food as opposed to being hunters and gatherers, okay? And that leads to the first civilizations, okay? Because if we're wandering around, we can't stop and develop culture and have buildings and a division of labor. We'll get into all that in a moment, okay? Now, some of our earliest uh, systems of government are systems where there's one guy in charge. He's the chief, he's the king, he's whatever type of ruler you want to call him. That one guy is in charge. Well, if you apply that to an economy, okay, and have the government in charge of the economy, you've got a command economy. The government controls it. They say who works where, what's produced, how many, how what. Okay. Now we're looking at the idea of technology. And we think of technology as being things like, hey, Mr. Pull is recording our lectures, we're watching them on our laptops. That's the type of technology. Well, technology is really any kind of tool. Okay? It could be even a simple stone tool from the Stone Age. That was their technology. Pen and paper, technology, pencil, blackboard, all the old things we don't use so much in school all at one time were cutting edge technology. Okay? The new technology that we're talking about today, like this, has sped up the spread of ideas. As I mentioned in class, I can send out a tweet and it gets to everyone around the world instantly. Okay, I don't have that many followers, so. Don't be looking for that anytime soon. Okay, as part of our environment, we have some things that become aspects of our culture that we mentioned earlier. Okay, and one of those is religion, and the various religions throughout the world shape, you know, our culture and our beliefs. They teach us our basic values. And as I just mentioned, these are a huge influence on our culture. 
Uh, depending on our religion, our culture has different ideas. But our culture helps explain why people live the way they do. Okay? It's our language, it's our belief systems, it's uh, our sense of what we like for music, what we like to eat as food. All these things are part of our culture. Now, one of the problems with culture is we often look at another culture and say, they do what? They eat squid at a baseball game? That's crazy. We eat hot dogs. Okay, they're eating fresh seafood, we're eating ground up meat bits. I'm not sure who's crazy now. Okay, that idea of judging another culture by the values of your culture is ethnocentrism. Okay, when you're doing the URQs for me in class and you come across something and you think, boy, that's strange, that's weird, that's crazy, then you, the question to ask is, why are they doing that? So, hey, I found this interesting because we do the opposite. Okay. Other aspects of our global environment, climate is one of those, which is sort of an average of the weather for a region. And it, it is affected by latitude and altitude. Okay, remember latitude, those lines that ran parallel across the earth, like the equator, Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Okay, the higher in latitude you get, and higher means either going north or going south, further away from the equator, then your higher latitude and higher latitude means colder weather, okay? Altitude, same way. Higher in altitude I go, the colder the weather I'm going to get, okay? So, simple way to pop, hopefully try and remember those things. Interdependence, this is a concept of our world today, the fact that countries around the world rely on goods from other countries. Look at all the things we get from China, okay? But a lot of those things are designed here in the United States. So, there's an interdependence there going on. In terms of culture in our family, uh, in, in our culture, rather, I should say, we rely on the nuclear family, which is this idea of parents and their children. Okay, we'll look at some other options for that down the road here in just a moment. Okay, now, the opposite of the nuclear family is the idea of the extended family. This is, okay, all relatives, okay? We've got mom and dad here, we got the kids, oh, we got grandma and grandpa also, could be aunts and uncles, whatever, almost sort of a tribal type situation, but a lot of variations, uh, variations going on, so a lot of different things in terms of extended family. In other cultures, and all the times even in our culture, Extended families tended to live together because there were no social support systems like a Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid. Okay? Now, social mobility is a concept that is uh, relatively new in uh, Western society. This is the idea of being able to move up in social status uh, from the guys over here, the working class that can't afford uh, long pants, to these guys who have to walk around in top hats. I guess that's an improvement. I'm not sure how. Uh, but then again, I wear bow ties. Okay? So, in a lot of cultures, whatever class you're born into, you're stuck there. In ours, you can move up. Okay? And then there's the idea of cultural diffusion. This is the spread of ideas from one culture to another. Diffuse, diffusing, diffusion, okay? The spread of ideas. Look, here we are in a Middle Eastern country, uh, women uh, covered in, in purta or chadors, and we've got our McDonald's, okay? Coca-Cola, McDonald's, lots of various things that are examples of cultural fusion and the spread of ideas. Uh, still dealing with this, family is very important to culture, okay, because we talk about those beliefs and things that make up our culture. Well, the family is the one that teaches each new generation the beliefs and ideas of the culture, okay, and so that's a very important role they have. Other roles of the family and culture, either a key social organization, the nuclear family now before the extended family, uh, and they are the first teachers of language. In fact, mothers are often seen as the first teachers, period. Okay. Now, there's been changes to the family in today's society. Where we've, Again, we've moved from that extended to a nuclear family. Uh, families are becoming more and more blended. That is to say, uh, we're seeing remarriages. We've got stepmoms, stepdads, stepbrothers, half-brothers, half-sisters, all these types of things, meaning where families are, are changing uh, continuously, not just moving from extended to nuclear, but nuclear to blended versions of that nuclear system.